we ended last season of Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist on a very emotional goodbye. Um, we were anticipating the loss of Mitch throughout the entire season, and by the end, we finally lost him, which was very sad. And we had a, an amazing musical number in American Pie that was a six minute oneer at the funeral for Mitch. And so season two, we pick up about seven weeks after Mitch's death. Zoe has been living at home with her mom and she hasn't heard a heart song since the day the music died. Season two explores how we move on after losing someone. The grieving process doesn't just end when somebody passes away. It continues, it morphs, it changes shape. And throughout season two, we watch Zoe and the Clark family um, live with this tremendous loss that they suffered. In season two, you better believe we have a lot of amazing musical numbers choreographed by Emmy winner Mandy Moore. Um, season two, we get to see a lot more of the backstory of some of our other characters, some of your fan favorites. You'll get to know more about them. Coming back to work has been such a blessing. I feel so privileged to be able to have a job in this moment and to be able to work on this job that means so much to me. I love this show. I love that our audience loves our show and I love the crew and the cast. And so it's been just so thrilling to be able to shoot more of this story. And, you know, two things go on at once where it, it feels so bizarre to be back at work after so much time at home, but it also feels very normal at the same time. And um, I'm really excited for you guys to see what we're working on. One of the songs that I'm really looking forward to watching this season is Baby Did a Bad, Bad Thing by Chris Isaacs. It also has incredible choreography, of course. Mandy Moore only does incredible choreography. And I'm also excited for a couple duets. I may or may not be involved in those. Can't tell you. I think that our show explores universal themes in life that everyone can understand uh, across different cultures and in different languages. We talk about love and connection and empathy and loss and grief. And I'm pretty sure there isn't a human being on earth that doesn't understand those things. The finale of episode one, uh, the musical number American Pie, which was a almost seven minute one with the entire cast was a incredible way to end the season. It takes so much teamwork and camaraderie and communication. And that is the best thing about filmmaking is um, working with a, a group of people to achieve a goal. And boy, do I think we achieved it. I have so many fantasy heart songs that I, Jane as Zoe would love to sing. Some of them I might mention and you won't think they make sense, but I could figure out a way. Um, I like Ariana Grande, No Tears Left to Cry, uh, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by Elton John, um, Misunderstanding by Genesis, Anything by Bonnie Raitt, Dolly Parton. I could keep going, but who wants to listen? I enjoy everything about working on Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. It sounds like hyperbolic, but it's true. I love this character. I love the cast. We have an amazing crew. I love Vancouver, where we shoot the show. I'm from San Francisco, where the show takes place. Uh, I mean, ultimately, the best part is being surrounded by music and dancing. It is a very uh, joyful work environment, and it also has me flexing muscles that I've never flexed before. In season two, you will see Zoe coping with her grief in various ways. She is a coder, so by nature she's very problem-solvy. 
if that's a way you can describe someone. And it makes her a bit crazy that she can't solve her grief. And over and over, her superpower tells her and tells the audience that you can't solve everything. Some things you have to feel and experience, and you have to continue to hear the melody in life. And so time and time again, Zoe has to be reminded that this is going to be an ongoing process. But she tries being a rebel. She tries being sober. She tries drinking. She tries escaping her grief through sexual relations. <laughs> um, all of it as ways to just, you know, feel good because she's deep down in a lot of pain. So, what happened season one? Here's what you missed on Zoe's. Um, so, Zoe gets an MRI machine. She can hear people sing. Um, her father's sick. She is in a love triangle. And she meets me. I think that's it. <laughs> her father dies. Sad, sad day. Um, and we pick up with the pieces of that and where she should go from there and where the family goes from there and everybody else's effect on that. Mo's journey last season was new beginnings. Um, when we first meet Mo, Mo is that neighbor that's avoiding Zoe in a way, and Zoe gets this power, and Mo is so inclined to befriend Zoe. But it's not just that, it's the self discovery of, of it all and understanding and appreciating yourself, whether it be in love or in life and identity and uh, faith. 2020 has brought us a whole pandemic and I didn't know and a lot of us didn't know if we were going to come back, if we were going to start filming season two. Um, but being back, I feel the safest in a way. Everyone is taking every precaution. Everyone is being very aware and everyone is taking it serious. And being that we're in uh, such an un unprecedented time, it feels good to know that people are still taking it serious and everybody's looking out for each other. And I can say that this community on this set is doing above and beyond for that. What I missed most while I was away from the cast and crew of Zoe's, huh? There's so many. I missed dressing up every day and looking fabulous because I've been in sweats all year. Um, I miss my hair and makeup team that get me all the way together. I miss my dressers. I miss the crew and the jokes that we, Jane started this joke Friday and it's wonderful. Um, I missed that. And I just miss seeing people because I was alone in my apartment all year. The only friend that I had was Don Julio. What fans should be excited for this season? Granted, I'm singing so much this season, so be excited for that. But everybody is doing more. We're getting really into all of these characters and you're gonna find out some juicy things. Ooh. One of my favorite numbers from season one, hands down, will always be Mitch singing True Colors. Anytime I hear True Colors, I could be at the mall. I could be, well, we can't go to the mall, so I could be at a restaurant, can't go to a restaurant. I could be laying in my bed and the TV plays True Colors and I instantly start crying. It's that sense memory nonsense. And even now, I'm going to cry because I hear, like, I'm a big fan of Cindy Lauper. She's a friend of mine. Oh, I just dropped a name. <laughs> but um, that song just gets me every time. Never mind. In season one, we left off on kind of a bit of a cliffhanger as far as Max and Zoe are concerned. They made out. They're not talking about it. Um, there was this terrible tragedy in Zoe's life where she lost her father, Mitch, and we were all kind of there for her. And now when we pick up, it's two months later. Zoe is living with her mom. Max is still kind of wondering where they stand. And uh, the rest, uh, you'll see. My character had quite the journey in season one. Uh, in season one, Max was a bit of a vehicle for Zoe, especially at the workplace, um, because they were coworkers, but also best friends. And Max also had a secret crush on Zoe. And throughout the season, that crush kind of came to light. We saw it realized, we saw Zoe understand it, Max deal with it, and then their paths kind of crossed. 
but now in season two, we're able to take Max's storyline a little bit further, especially outside of Zoe, because uh, Max has been fired from Sparkpoint. So now we get to see him on a new business venture and kind of coming into his own a bit more. The Zoe, Max, Simon love triangle. There is a lot to be said about that. Um, there are certain teams uh, and there's Team Max, there's Team Simon. Um, I think that there's a lot more to expect from that love triangle, especially as it pertains to Max and Simon together as friends and how they'll coexist, both, you know, pining for the same girl. And I think that our show kind of does some different stuff with that. And I'm excited for audiences to see that this season. I think the thing that I missed most of all being away from the cast and crew was just the camaraderie uh, we, and the levity. You know, it's been quite a serious time and this cast is rarely taking anything seriously except for health and safety. Uh, so I think it's the laughs in between. I think it's the dinners that we would have. And now that we're all, you know, tested very seriously, we are able to have very, very, very small group hangs um, outside of the office. And that's, that's been nice. What should fans be most excited for in season two? I, I would probably say the, the, the music. There's more music this time around. There's new combinations of characters, maybe people we didn't see interact as much in season one. Um, so that's very exciting. I'm thinking of one off the top of my head right now that I won't share, but uh, it, it's, it's just a, a new look and uh, a new perspective on people uh, and characters you already know. So one of the opening sequences of season two is a very thrilling musical number. I got to watch it actually firsthand. And um, what can I actually say? It's big, uh, a lot of the ensemble is involved, and Barbara Streisand? Where do we find Max at the start of season two? You will find him unemployed, unsure about a lot of things, and asking all the same questions that you guys have been asking over these few months. And those will be all answered for you. I absolutely love the dynamic between Max, Simon, and Mo. Uh, I, I know that they are all extensions of Zoe, but through her grieving process, they've started a group message and then group hangs, and now they're just friends. And I'm so glad that we all get to exist in the world um, with or without Zoe. And I think the thing that brings them together is just like a great sensibility, um, humor, and uh, honestly, Zoe. Zoe brings them together, or at least brought them together in the first place. What makes this show appealing to international audiences is music. It's music and connection, which is something that everyone in the world, no matter where you are, can enjoy. The epic one-shot sequence with the whole cast at the end of season one was magical to shoot, watching everyone all the crew, all the actors, all the extras, in like this, this moving like one. It was fantastic. Fans are gonna love this over the top number when Zoe returns to the office um, because everybody is in unison and it kind of blasts the door open for season two. All of the energy, all of the energy that we have on the screen is going to just fill you up. A fantasy heart song that I would love to sing, well, there's a myriad of them, one. Two, um, in this moment right now, I would say Fly Away by Lenny Kravitz. The things I love the most about working on Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist are that I get to sing, dance, and act. I think people have turned to Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist to escape and ease their anxieties because there's so much joy and heart and humanity in the show. And right now, um, in this time, not only are we separated from each other tangibly, we can't touch each other, we can't hug each other, we can't see each other or laugh or kiss each other, um, but sometimes it feels like our hearts are separate from each other as well. And with Zoe's, all of those things are put together and, uh, and they get to have that in their living room. I think the secret to the show's success are uh, the characters. I think the characters are filled with humanity. They're wrought with humanity. And that's why people, when they watch the show, they can see themselves. 
At the start of season two, we find Simon uh, worrying about Zoe because he hasn't heard from her much and Max hasn't heard from her much and Mo hasn't heard from her much. So you see the three of them worrying about their friend. I would describe the dynamic between Max, Mo, and Simon as uh, eclectic, um, odd, and uh, joyful. Um, I also think it's filled with a lot of heart because they seem like, all three of them seem like people who, who wouldn't necessarily enjoy hanging out together, but um, they connect via Zoe, and through Zoe they connect via heart, and that is the thing that brings them all together. Is Simon comfortable with branching out into PR? No, he hasn't done it before. That's not what he does. Um, but he finds that he has a knack for it. And with that, he also has a lot to learn. Um, and he finds that he also has a lot to offer, which is wonderful. So in season one, Tobin starts off a bit of a jerk. And I think that, I think Tobin's really misled. I think he's also really misunderstood. And he has so much growing to do. So through the course of the season, understanding his friendship with Leaf and understanding his relationship with Zoe more, I think has, we got to see Tobin's empathetic side a little bit. And I'm, and, and I think that was, that was what was so surprising towards the end of the season that deep down inside, Tobin's actually really, really sensitive. And to explore that was great. To being back on set, it's a dream. I don't, I, didn't realize how grateful I was to be working until you realize that like it's so hard right now to just be doing this and with all the challenges that we have the fact that we're here the fact that we're making this the fact that all these people around us are I'm so grateful and everyone around us has put blood sweat tears to make this happen and uh, I just want to make the most of it and really cherish it and make sure we're doing a really good job for everyone All right, so one of the things that makes this a big hit with international audiences is that it's got songs that are timeless. You got everything from the Beatles to uh, Beyonce. This is the perfect show for the stuff that we're going through right now as a world because it just allows you to sort of escape into these songs, to lose yourself in these songs and, and the story and weave yourself through these incredible dance numbers by Mandy, who's amazing, and, and, and the story by Austin, and it's just, it's just lovely. I think the secret to the show's success is that encapsulated by a very great story, it's got a tremendous amount of heart. It's got a family storyline that everyone can relate to. It's got comedy. It's got incredible songs from the Beatles to Beyonce. <laughs> the fan reaction has been uh, really awesome. People have loved. I think everyone is going on a bigger journeys for like themselves, every character is, um, as opposed to, you know, these larger, more overarching things. I think everyone is kind of trying to grow in their own way. And um, yeah, I think that's exciting to see. Get ready for a, a few Broadway tunes. And um, I think a lot more people are feeling things collectively and therefore uh, the dance numbers get a little bit bigger. I think audiences in and out of anywhere would love like just hit after hit after hit being redone and performed in new and exciting ways and to have an emotional backing behind that. I think like all of, all of that seems extremely entertaining to me. You're never going to find more talented and genuinely human 
people, or at least not this many in this space who can all sing that well. I am so excited to be back. I love playing Leaf. I love getting to mess around with everybody. And uh, I'm excited to get to know him more and to let you guys get to know him more. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a blast. Um, in Zoe's absence, Leaf has... Uh, He's, he's, he's taken his own um, style and, and put it on things just a little bit. Um, everyone's at standing desks because it increases productivity as long as you don't get tired while you're standing. Uh, while Zoe's been gone, Leaf has taken a few liberties. Um, he actually had to do some budget cuts for the, uh, the cereal bar, so now things get a, a little bit more sparse. And then now everyone's doing standing desks because um, even though it doesn't really improve productivity, it just, just makes you feel like you're doing something. Uh, filming during the pandemic is a little different, um, but I think that even with the masks and the sanitation and the distance and the isolation and all this stuff, I think people are making an effort to make sure that we're still as comfortable around one another and that we're still feeling like we're all in this together. So it's kind of almost beautiful to see people bridge that gap even more actively. Uh, for season two, I've already sweat more than I did all last season. Uh, we're doing some, some wild dances. And uh, you guys are going to love it. It's, um, it's been a blast so far. What am I most excited about for season two? I would say I've sweat more than I did all of last season already. We're doing some real fun dances. Uh, we're going real hard, and you guys are going to love it. Where do I hope season two will go? I would say... I hope it gets um, more personal for more people. And I think that's where the strength of our show is, is in how everyone thinks differently and how everyone processes, processes everything differently. Um, it would be great to see that in the characters through those different lenses. At the end of season one, uh, we left off with the, the sad death of Mitch, and uh, we basically don't know how it's going to affect the family, and, um, and we don't know uh, if Zoe's going to end up with Max or Simon. And uh, when we pick up with season two, we start to find out a little bit more about uh, which way she's going to lean and how the family is dealing with the loss of, of the father and, um, and how they're each going through their own thing and how David and Emily have a baby now. Filming uh, during the pandemic has been an interesting experience, especially, especially learning dance numbers uh, while wearing a mask, which if you're in really good shape, that might be easy. Um, but for me, it's, uh, it's definitely been a challenge. Uh, I'm constantly just having to ask the dance team if I can just take a minute to take a breath. It's also different in that everybody, the crew is keeping their distance a little bit more. So the feeling, the sort of familial feeling that we had last year where everybody was sort of friendly and interacting nonstop has definitely changed a bit, which is um, sad in a way. Uh, it's, I mean, it's definitely sad, uh, but at the same time, everybody's so happy to be here and we all know each other and we all clearly care about the show and care about each other. So you still feel that level of support, even though you're not getting to interact with people in the same way. I think, I think the thing I miss most being away from everybody for the hiatus was probably just getting to see everybody do their thing. Like, you know, these are people that I'm a fan of. Uh, normally so getting to sit on set and be in the front row basically and watch Alex Newell 
sing his song 10 times or Skylar or Jane or any, you know, or Mary or anybody. Um, I miss getting to do that. It's a, it's a pretty lucky uh, position to be in, one that I would pay thousands of dollars to, uh, to, you know, people that I would pay thousands of dollars to go see. So it was exciting to, it's exciting to get to be, be there for all that. I hope that in season two that the show continues to grow and continues to explore uh, deeper subjects and continues to to explore the the sort of mythology of of Zoe's power. And I hope we get to see other weird iterations of it, like in episode eight of season one, where she starts singing, for example. Um, I think there's all sorts of fun elements to play with there, and I'm excited to see where Austin and the writers take that. I think fans are going to love what happens when Zoe returns to the office in episode uh, one of the second season, because there's a huge elaborate uh, theatrical production number that, uh, that's probably one of the biggest numbers that have ever been on the show. And I think people are going to be really, really excited to see it. I think this is a perfect show for the time. I, I, I think Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist is a perfect show for times right now because it's filled with joy and it's, and it's it's, there's an escapist quality to it with these musical numbers that everybody loves. And uh, at the same time, there's such emotion to the show that people can really connect to it and find themselves uh, in the heart songs and find what they're going through in those heart songs. And I think it's just a sort of breath of fresh air. And, and I think Jane as Zoe is a breath of fresh air and so uh, effervescent. And so uh, it's almost like a, it's, it's almost when I, when I when I watch the show, it's like kind of like all the weight falls off of my shoulders, and I can just sort of escape for an hour and 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 go on a, a sort of magical journey with these characters. I think one thing that makes the show really appealing to international audiences is the fact that music is a universal language. So it you could you could literally watch. Uh, watch the show and not understand a word of it, but through the dance and through the music, you can get a sense of what's, of what's going on. Um, and I think that's what's so beautiful about it is that everybody does sort of speak that language of music. It's about human beings and it's about human emotion and it's about what's inside all of us. And I think no matter what language you speak or no matter what what culture you're from, we all relate to those same basic human emotions. And I think that's what's so powerful. And I think that's what's so powerful about the show. Should I go back? Um, and, I think, and I think that's what's so powerful about the show is that it brings out those human emotions that we normally keep underneath. And on any other TV show, we wouldn't necessarily get to see those emotions. But because Zoe can see inside of our hearts, essentially, we're able to express those in a more full way. And I think anybody anywhere can understand that and relate to it.